Adjustment layers were added to Premiere Pro with the release of CS6, and if you're already familiar with using them in Photoshop or in uh, After Effects, it's kind of old news. The workflow is very, very simple, and it just opens up some really wonderful new opportunities to work with effects. It's also extremely efficient. If you want to make a new adjustment layer, you can click on the New Item button at the bottom of the Project menu and choose Adjustment Layer. When you choose this option, it's a little bit like making a new title. Premiere Pro is going to take the settings for your current sequence, which is the width of 1280 by a height of 720 in this case, and the time base, and a pixel aspect ratio. It just fills in these boxes automatically. I'm going to click OK here, and let's call this uh, Look 1 Adjustment Layer. OK. In terms of editing, adjustment layers behave in exactly the same way as titles. You can just drag and drop onto the timeline and resize as much as you want and position them however you like and trim them and so on. And effectively, an adjustment layer is a layer through which you see the layers below. But, so well, you can see here, for example, it's transparent. I'm not having any impact on the layers below it. But any effects that you apply to the adjustment layer are applied to the layers below as well. So for example, if I go to my effects and uh, maybe go to, uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's just take an obvious one. I'll take the fast color corrector and drop it onto this adjustment layer. And then if I go to my effect controls, let's make this really obvious. I'm going to crank up the levels so it's really really high contrast, and any clip that is beneath this adjustment layer is going to be seen via it. I'm just going to turn off the audio so I can scrub here, and you can see very, very clearly all of these clips underneath the adjustment layer are being seen via my fast color corrector. And as soon as the adjustment layer runs out, I'm back to the unmodified effect. Of course, the positioning of an adjustment layer is very important. You see here, I've got my layer set up on video three, and that's in front of my graphic. It's kind of ruining the graphic, as well as giving me this very stark look for my video. Actually, that is a little bit too stark, isn't it? Let's just pull the levels up a bit so you can see what's going on a little in this image, but it's still very, very strong contrast. So if I want to fix that, I just need to swap these around. I'm just going to be pretty lazy here and drag this out of the way and pull that title up and drop it down underneath. And there you go. Now my graphic is in its original state, nice and clean above the adjustment layer. And again, anything below the adjustment layer is seen through the effect. This is a really good way of applying a look to an entire scene if you need to. For example, I can pull this over and because of the snapping, this is going to snap to the beginning of this wide shot. And I'm just going to select this fast color corrector and delete it. And let's say I've got these shots. In fact, these three, uh, maybe these two, but let's say this scene has a look that I developed based on adjustments to the first clip. If I look in my effects list, I can see, let me clear this out, I've got a camera B fix preset that I created earlier. I can apply just about any effect to the adjustment layer. About the only thing that probably wouldn't make any difference would be things like the uh, adjusting the speed of playback. It's not going to do anything because I'm adjusting the speed of the adjustment layer rather than the clips. But if I drag and drop this preset onto the adjustment layer, right away you can see, by selecting it, I've got my three effects apply. There's Gaussian blur, I've got a horizontal flip, there's a fast color corrector, and as I drag through, all of these clips are being affected by it. Now it's a bit of a problem, isn't it? Because actually this shot and this shot, they have a totally different look to them. Presumably they're shot at different times of day, different settings on the camera. So I don't really want my adjustment layer to cover those shots. Well, it's a bit of an issue. And the only ways around it are probably logic ones. If I, for example, press Control or Command K. Oops, that's got the wrong layer selected. Let's just get the right layer. Control or Command K, it's going to add a cut there. I can then... Just trim back, and you can see now, in fact, I don't really need that. You can see now I've chopped up my adjustment layer, and I'm seeing those other clips with their own grading and their own color. But now I've got an issue because each of these has their own effect settings, and that kind of destroys the 
point of it. I suppose it's useful. I might have extra layers underneath. I might combine them in some way. But for me, the elegance of the adjustment layer is that you have one set of adjustments for multiple clips. So I've got a workaround here that uh, it um, might seem like a bit of a fudge, but it does work. If I go to my project panel and click on the new item button, I can make a color mat and I can make it pure white. Let's call this white mat. And then I can get another one. Well, in fact, um, actually, I can probably just make do with the white. I'm going to show you why, because I'm going to use the track matte key effect to combine with the adjustment layer. I'm going to lay this white matte down on the timeline just where I want the adjustment layer to be visible. So you can see right now it looks pretty useless because I've got pure white filling the screen any time the white matte is in place. But if I go to my effects and I put the track matte key on this adjustment layer and then choose as my key, as my matte, video 3, and then specify to composite using the luminance rather than the alpha, just to be on the safe side. Now, where I've got a white mat, I'm going to see the adjustment layer, and where I don't, I'm not. So now, let me just move this over a bit so you can see the result a bit more clearly. Let me just zoom in a little bit. I hope I'm not being a bit too clever with this effect, but okay, now let's turn off snapping. Here I've got the original unmodified version of the shot, as soon as the mat kicks in, the adjustment layer is becoming visible thanks to the mat. You see here, I've got my track mat key set up, and I'm only going to see the adjustment layer where the white parts of this mat are. Then, if we go towards the end of this, you can see there's a gap. Again, I'm going to trim this out so you can see the effect. I've got the effect, I've got the effect, and then the white mat ends and I'm seeing the unmodified image in the background. So if you do want to have just one set of controls to modify your effects, you can do it by combining the adjustment layer with the track mat effect and a white fill layer. Now I can do things like go into my color corrector and maybe pull this away from the blue a little bit towards the green. That's awful, doesn't it? Let's go, let's go bright orange so it's nice and visible. And there we've got the effect, no effect, effect. Okay, you might not go for something almost as monochrome as that, but hopefully you get the idea. It's this combination of effects that makes Premiere Pro a powerful finishing system. And of course, it does mean that your timeline might get a little bit messy, and it means that you're going to need to be aware that the timing of this clip, this teacher shot, for example, is intrinsically linked now to the timing of this white matte clip. I need those to be absolutely synchronized for my effect to kick in and leave at the right times. Let me turn my uh, snapping on here to make sure I get that absolutely lined up. So that's working with adjustment layers in Premiere Pro CS6.